reaction to what we're now learning about Robert Mueller's very quick complaint yes. uh, to William Barr about William Barr's first public uh, statement about the Mueller report. Well, the New York Times, which got the story second, um, has a, a line in its story that I think gives a piercing shot of light as to what this dispute is, is ultimately about. The Times got a comment from people around Barr that what Barr was angry at Mueller about was that the Mueller report Barr felt was written for Congress mm -hmm. and not for him. Mm -hmm. So why would that bother him? Well, because the issue of the Mueller report is, was there obstruction? And Mueller sets up facts that say, if this were anybody but the president, obviously, yes. However, this department has rules that say, I can't charge the president. And since I can't charge the president, I'm, I'm going to follow this department's rules. Therefore, I'm not going to make any recommendations to anybody. I'm going to pass this over to the people who have the power and the right to make the decision. And that is not you, Mr. Barr. That is Congress. And that is what Barr was angry about, that Mueller was forcing his hand by taking a decision that Mueller wanted to make away from him, giving it to these gentlemen, to say, if you all think there's been obstruction of justice, then you have remedies. This department does not. And Barr is saying, I am going to uh, take the fact that I don't have a remedy to say there isn't a problem when there was a problem. Uh, Neil Katyal, uh, to that point, uh, it seems uh, that that interpretation of the Mueller report then uh, suggests that what William Barr did was, in effect, intercept it. Uh, if the report was intended uh, to be delivered to the body that can make a judgment about obstruction of justice, it, uh, it was then intercepted by an attorney general who, according to the department's own rules, actually can't make a decision about of justice, and then he made a decision about obstruction of justice. Right. Exactly. I mean, the whole thing is so snowflakey, just like much of the Trump <laughs> yeah. administration. They have all these, like, fake complaints. I mean, you know, how can Barr complain about Mueller not reaching a conclusion about obstruction of justice? That's, after all, what happened in Whitewater with Jaworski. It's what happened Whitewater with Ken Starr, and it's what happened in Watergate with Jaworski. They just sent the material up to Congress and said, you decide. And I agree with David Frum entirely. The whole idea behind the, uh, that you can't indict a sitting president Every scholar, even the Office of Legal Counsel memos, and even the Mueller report all say the reason for that is because you have to impeach first. You've got to have a congressional determination first. So how Barr can sit there and complain about this when, after all, it's what he wanted, um, which was the non-indictment of his boss, uh, the president, um, is beyond me. And then, you know, the special counsel regulations did exactly what we hoped they would do here, which is force sunlight on Barr. If he's going to interfere, we're going to find out about it. And that's exactly what we're finding out tonight. Massive interference by the attorney general in an ongoing investigation of his boss, the president of the United States. And you cannot trust an attorney general who interferes in such a way with an independent investigation. Uh, Neil, let me ask you about one other point of interference with your experience in the Justice Department. And that is, uh, can the attorney general prevent William Barr from testifying because we have a breaking news report tonight in the Daily Beast uh, saying that House Democrats tell the Daily Beast they've been told Special Counsel Robert Mueller is willing to testify before them about his report on Russian interference in the 2016 election, but that the Department of Justice has been unwilling to set a date for it to happen. Neil, uh, can the Attorney General prevent William Barr from testifying? Uh, uh, t prevent uh, Robert Mueller from testifying? No, I mean... And these folks are, at the Trump administration are so afraid of the truth. They're afraid to testify. Barr is afraid to testify in the House of Representatives on Thursday because he might get more than five minutes of questions in a row. Um, and now they're trying to prevent, according to the Daily Beast, Mueller from testifying. Um, it's not going to work. And it's not going to work because we wrote the special counsel regulations anticipating a nefarious attorney general like what it's evidently it seems like we have. And the failsafe was to appoint someone from outside of the Justice Department. So Robert Mueller was outside of the Justice Department. He was brought in to be special counsel. But he can leave tomorrow, leave government service tomorrow, and the attorney general and the president will not be able to stop him from testifying. That was our break glass in case of emergency option. I sure hope we don't have to use it. But everything that this administration has done to try and squelch the truth leads me to think we might have to cross that bridge. Uh, Congressman Krishnamurthy, uh, Rachel Maddow reported in the previous hour that uh, her, her 
uh, staff contacted uh, the special the spokesperson for the special counsel's office, and once again they said that uh, that Robert Mueller's departure is days away, but that's something they've said uh, weeks ago, that it's days away. So it may be that that's what we're waiting for in order for him to testify. Um, it, it may be that, um, but on the other hand, I still think that uh, Mr. Mueller um, should uh, express himself publicly on this, uh, whether he should testify or not. I think that his taciturnness at this point is perhaps counterproductive. I think that uh, on the one hand, he has to show deference to the Department of Justice. But on the other hand, he is a special counsel. He needs to exercise some independence. And um, at least through his spokesman, he should express uh, his desire to testify and make it known. And if uh, at that point, the Justice Department normally says no, uh, then he has to leave. But we have to remember you know, the Trump administration is now trying to get even former officials from uh, testifying, preventing them from testifying, yeah. such as Mr. McGahn, yeah. the White House counsel. Um, again, I have to say, Congress has the power to subpoena these people in their individual capacity and hold them in contempt in their individual capacity. And we have to vindicate our, the right of the people to have oversight of this president. And, and Don McGahn's uh, personal lawyer now has been showing some deference to the notion that the White House might still have control over the testimony of a former White House staffer. I just want to bring in this new uh, call for the attorney general's resignation. And it comes with some weight from Senator Chris Van Hollen because he is using the testimony that Robert Barr, actually answer Robert Barr, gave to him in a Senate hearing as the reason. Uh, he's saying tonight, Senator Van Hollen is saying, on April 20th, I asked Barr, did Bob Mueller support your conclusion? His answer was, I don't know whether Mueller supported